So you should have had some time to work through these five problems that are on exercise one. I've already listed the answers for exercises A and B because they're fairly straightforward. They're very similar to what we've already done. Questions C, D, and E may be a little more challenging, but hopefully you've already answered them. I'll walk you through the, how to write those out to see if you got the right answer. For question C, we have chromium solid reacting with three moles of silver ions to produce chromium three plus ions in three moles of solid silver. So what would be the equilibrium constant expression for letter C? Again, we start with the products, but if we look at the products, the first thing you have to remember is to look at the physical state of each of the products. Chromium three plus ions, aqueous, that's okay to include. And there's no coefficient, so that's a coefficient of one, so we leave it at one. Three moles of solid silver. What do we know about this that's important to take into account? The silver is in the solid phase. So we do not include silver in the equilibrium constant expression. Now let's look at the reactant side. We have solid chromium and we have aqueous silver ions. Again, because chromium is solid, we do not take that into account in the equilibrium constant expression. Silver ions are aqueous, so we do include those. And because we have three moles of silver ions, we raise that to the third power. So the equilibrium constant expression for this one is simply the chromium ion concentration divided by the cube of the silver ion concentration. Not too bad. Again, pay attention to those physical states. For letter D, again, it, it'll work very similar. The only thing we have to take into account is that we also have two solids in this equation. We have iron on the reactant side and we have solid iron oxide on the product side. So once we've eliminated those two compounds, what do we have left for the equilibrium constant expression? We have four moles of hydrogen gas on the product side. So that's hydrogen raised to the fourth power. And we also have four moles of water in the gas phase. So we need to include that in the denominator. raised to the fourth power. So again, not too bad, fairly easy. Let's look at equation E here. We have water, but water is in the liquid phase, not the gas phase like it was over here. So again, this is where it pays, it's important to pay attention to the physical state. Liquids are never included in the equilibrium constant expression. The carbonate ion, aqueous, that'll be okay to include. Hydroxide ions, aqueous phase, we'll include that. And the bicarbonate ion, also aqueous, so we'll include that. So the equilibrium constant expression would be the concentration of the hydroxide ion times the concentration of the bicarbonate ion divided by the concentration of the carbonate ion, all to the first power because there are no coefficients. And again, liquid water does not appear in the denominator because it's in the liquid phase. Now you should go on to exercise two where you actually calculate the K sub C and K sub P values for the given equation. <coughs> 